talk to you today about copywriting. Neville, not me, is going to give you five things that you can do to improve your copywriting instantly today. My first thing is don't think of it as just text. Use images, use videos if you need. That's the best way to get the most amount of information into someone else's head or a million people's heads. So one of the examples, and we'll put the screenshot up here, is that literally on the AppSumo blog recently, they had the same exact email pop up to collect. They put a taco icon on the top of it and the taco icon on the top of it went from 40% increase in opt in email conversions and people signing up for the new humans innately use visuals to relate to the world. So if you show a person smiling, someone in another country can understand, oh, that's a happy person. No matter what country they're from, they'll be like, that's a happy person. But if you write it in text, that's a happy person out in English. Well, someone in Africa may not be able to read that. So you actually can't transmit information to as many people with just plain text. But with the visual, you can transmit information to almost everyone in the world over one years old. That's actually something we've built into sendfox.com. I was using the site today. Uh, it's email marketing for content creators, and I recommend everyone using it uh, to start your own newsletter. We have a lot of images on the site. So it's almost interesting. One of the, the favorite things I like to do with a little bit of copywriting, but also usability in a website is step back from your page and see if you can actually understand what's going on. And we actually had a lot of images that were saying, here's what you need to be doing. And this is what you're going to get for doing it. Hey, Mr. 30 at Facebook, what was one of the most popular features of Facebook when, they, when it came out? The photos? The photos. Oh, yeah. And what is like Instagram? Photos. Can you even post anything on Instagram without a photo? No. And so Pinterest, photos, all of these things are very photo visual based because you can communicate something instantly. Oh. The one thing I also want to just highlight as an asterisk to this, a lot of people say, well, that seems like a lot of words. No one's going to read it. It's not about how long or how short. It's how effective. Yeah. So people say, should I write short or long copy? I'm like, you can write long copy. Don't write long winded copy. That's a quote by Joseph Sugarman, one of the famous copywriters. People will read a gigantic Stephen King novel, right? People will read all 8 million Harry Potter books. They're pretty long, right? And they almost don't want them to end. So people will read long copy if they are interested and if it's interesting. All right, so what is the second thing that we can do to improve our copy today? Second thing is show, don't tell. Now this kind of reminds you of the first one with the graphics, but here's the thing. Whenever we do office hours, instead of Neville just talking to someone and saying, hey, you should change this, you should change that. What I do is I actually have a little JavaScript on my browser where I go and actually edit their actual web page on the spot. It's so much better to just show someone something live rather than tell them what to do. The other example of show, don't tell is I love clients that are software companies. And the reason is you don't have to really explain the software product. You can just show the product in action. Let's say for the SendFox feature where it aggregates all of your Twitter, your social information in one place. Instead of describing SendFox aggregates all of your social information in one place with the use of a JavaScript, Python, blah, blah. Instead of saying all that, why don't we just show a GIF of that feed of someone's? Why don't you allow them to type in their feeds and it auto creates a sample that just shows them what's going to happen. That is far more powerful than trying to explain it with words to show it. So one cool example is a shoe hospital. I used to walk by in Austin where we live most of the year where I would walk by the shoe hospital all the time and the sign said shoe hospital and had a picture of a shoe on it. So one day I walked by and I saw the guy outside like adjusting the signs and I was like, yo, what's a, what is a shoe hospital? He's like, it's a shoe hospital. And like he, he totally knew in his head what a shoe hospital was. He just didn't communicate it to me correctly. So he brought me inside. He was like, come here, watch this. And he held up a dirty shoe. And then he's like, this is a dirty shoe that someone brought in. And then he held up a clean shoe that he had restored. And I was like, oh, you make shoes better. He's like, yeah, a shoe hospital. So we did this experiment where I took hit, uh, pictures uh, from their website of clean versus dirty shoes, and I made that into a, an A-frame poster and we put it outside. Literally overnight, that place got 50% more walk-ins because of the poster I made. And get this, it has like two words on it. It just says like before and after, and shows before and after pictures of shoes that are dirty and clean. And it resulted in 50% more walk-ins every single day for that place. I love it. It's actually been something I've thinking about in this YouTube. During this whole video, I will do our best to include things that are showing you the writing on the Google Docs and the different ads and things that we've discussed. Because what I've thought about is I can tell you how to do things, but if I show it to you, you're more likely to believe it and actually take action on it. All right, number trace, ADA. So ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, 
action, A-I-D-A. And what it's trying to do is take an argument. So let's say I want Noah, so we're living in a house in Malibu right now, and let's say I want Noah to take out the trash, and he's uh. never taken out the trash, and I'm so angry about it. Well, normal emotional devil will be like, no, you need to take out the trash, and then there'll be a big fight, right? No. But instead, what if we use the ADA formula to do that? So for attention, I'd be like, hey, Noah, you know how we've been friends a long time, we have good understanding of each other? Yeah. Okay. So in the interest part, we're going to give interesting facts on why Noah should take out the trash. So Noah, you know how we have like bugs running around all the time? Oh yeah, actually there's one down there. And you know how like it stinks and we had people over and it like, they were like, oh, what's that smell? Oh, the fish guts? Yeah. And then we're going to go into desire. Wouldn't it be awesome if we didn't have a stinky house and it was clean all the time and uh, it was pleasant? I mean, we have the ocean breeze. So nice. But it, we don't want it blowing in garbage. It's going to smell like garbage. Exactly. Like so now we go into the action section. So. Look, anytime you see that the trash is filled, let's just take it out. I'll do the same thing. If you do the same thing, whenever the trash is about 75% full, just pack it up and throw it outside and we'll have a great house. So just remember, whenever it gets 75% full, take out the trash. That's all, right? By the way, you take out the trash all the time. I do actually like yeah. taking out the trash. Yeah, he's, I, it's not a problem. It, it, what's interesting is you're talking about copywriting. And I think it's one of these things that, it, that I hope people are starting to get some like spark in their head that like, oh, sh it's almost not copywriting, it's copy convincing. And it's, it's interesting to think about on my LinkedIn page or on my Instagram photos or on a dating app. That's what, that one of the things you made me think about that like the way I'm presenting myself is gonna convince the other person one way or another. And I can actually do it more effectively if I practice that. I think a really helpful thing to notice for all of those is a lot of people will, will ask me, they're like, what should I write on the page? They get really obsessed with that. I'm like, wait, 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 Let, let's step back for a moment. What is the thing you want to accomplish? So with your LinkedIn profile, do you want to get someone to contact you? Do you want them to get click a link? If it's your dating app profile, do you want them to ask you a question? Work backwards, what's the point? You want them to call you? Well, let me guess, at the very end in bold, we should probably say, hey, call me at 555 whatever. So we'll usually start backwards to get the action and then we'll craft the entire email saying like, how do we get to this point? I think what's beautiful about the ADA and I don't probably use it enough is it at least gives you some structure of how to organize your thoughts. So if you're just trying to convince someone in a video in a podcast in an image, it is interesting to say, all right, well, how can I go through the, maybe these steps and see how I'm actually addressing it to be effective in my, in my communication? That is one of the things in the copywriting course that people are like, dude, just because of that, like I've saved so much time just from the blank page, you're sitting down to write something and you're like, where do I start? Well, just put A, I, D, A, attention, interest, desire, action, and fill out those four parts. And you're like, oh, once I just remove those bold headlines, now I have the whole sales letter or email or anything. Number four, eliminate all the stuff that's not necessary. So I personally like using the caveman voice inside of my head where I act like a dumb caveman and say, Ugh, this is boring, this is stupid. And so the way you do that is you look at the piece of copy that you or someone else has wrote and you look at it like, I usually just lean back in my chair and I'm kind of like, just like, like I don't care. Like I'm not even taking it seriously and kind of scroll because you know what? That's how everyone reads your stuff. No one's like sitting intently. They're actually just kind of bleary eyed. Maybe they got three other tabs open. They're not really paying that much mm. attention. Whenever you go through your spam email, are you really paying attention? Do you think that copywriter was concerned? Yeah, he was probably concerned that like, oh, the person will think that this contraction is a little bit different than the other. In fact, you probably didn't even read it. So I go through it like a normal person would do, and I would eliminate all the things that don't earn its pixels. Like so that. if it is a sentence that doesn't say anything, so it's just like, yeah, so we're glad to have you on this email today. We really want to thank you. Does that really earn its pixels? Could you do that email without that sentence? Probably, it would probably work better without it. The most common thing is that it's like this verbal diarrhea, right? Like they write these really long things and they make it very serious. They sit down at their computer and they're like, okay, I gotta make this really good. I got to make this really right. Use big words, show that I'm fancy. That's actually the exact opposite thing. You wanna write like you talk. It's essentially. Now, here's the thing. Even if you work with a big company, people are like, well, I have to talk professional. I'm saying write casually, not wacky. Don't be like, what's up, y'all? What's going down? Like, I mean, you don't have to write like that. You could just be like, hey, we make apps for Fortune 500 companies. Would you like us to make one for you? That's just normal, casual talking, right? There's nothing wacky, there's nothing crazy, and it's still professional. One of my favorite examples of that, and this is gonna be the most obscure example you guys are ever gonna imagine, is the Tesla request to save your anonymous data while driving. You guys ever sign up for your MacBook or you go to a site and they're like, hey, can we get your anonymous data? And you always just say no. Most, do you say no most of the time? Most of the time. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to give you my data. And Tesla wrote this thing in normal English. It wasn't super goofy. They used proper punctuation and commas and, and normal English. And it was like, hey guys, 
We love your car. We love you. We want to improve the car for you. If you can share this data, we make sure it's completely anonymous. You'll never know about it, but that data will help us make a better car for you in the future and a safer car. And I was like, I was actually excited. To, yes, I still remember how well it was written. And you can go into, if you have a Tesla, you can go and actually look at sharing the data with them. The other thing I like to do is take the pressure off people from writing too much. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll write a sentence and then be like, no, 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 no. I, I feel like there's a better one. No, 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 there's a better one. 30 minutes later, they're on sentence number one still. So instead what you can do is take the pressure off and know that you can write multiple versions of this copy. So first I'll write out a very long version and I'll be like, wow, this is too long. I'll go through and edit it, make it medium, and then be like, why don't we just go for the gold and make it super duper short? If you're kind of on the edge, you're like, I don't know if I really believe in this stuff or how much it can make a difference, is try it out. So try it out maybe in a smaller amount of your audience, or if you have a page, try to rechange some of these things and see what kind of a difference it's gonna make for you. A button could be a big difference, like request a call, contact us for free. Like that's all copy and just things that people could be changing and improving to get better results. So a little tack onto that is using formatting. So bullet points are your friend oftentimes up to three to five bullet points and also headings. So for example, for this video, we had one is graphics, two is show don't tell, three is ADA, four is elimination, and then five is whatever the hell we're gonna talk about next. So number five, and this one's my favorite, it's have fun and write like your mood. So first of all, I like to smile. I like having fun. I watch Seinfeld all the time because it's hilarious and there's never any lessons learned. So I like to have fun doing this stuff and also who doesn't want to have fun doing their work? I'm gonna talk to you about the tale of two emails. When AppSumo got started, I was sending emails to our small, very small audience. It was me and this guy, Nikolai, who doesn't even know how to speak English very well. No offense, Nikolai. And we were making a few hundred dollars per email. And Neville came along and said, hey, why don't I take it a shot and rewrite this email? And at some point I just had nothing left to lose. <laughs> so I let him write an email about an app called Kernis, which was fonts, which I still don't get about. And he wrote this email with Steve Jobs and Time Serif and Freak in the Sheets and all this really weird stuff that I was just like, okay, I can't wait for us to get canceled. And he ended up sending the email and we it was the first deal we ever made over $10,000. And over the past 10 years, Neville has been now coaching and helping many, many, many people with copywriting and at AppSumo as well. We've now made millions of dollars from email marketing using a lot of the techniques and Neville can read off some of the email that he wrote. Okay, class, who wants to learn the programming language Python from scratch? Me, 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 me. Made a good choice, class. Max Levichin, creator of PayPal and Slide, uses Python for his sites. In fact, even a certain little old site called AppSumo uses Python. All us sumos have big Pythons. In <laughs> fact, this chief sumo's girlfriend, who weighs one-fifth of what I do, learned to program Python as her first programming language and now works at a company called, well, it rhymes with Moala and starts with the G. Come on. Any who's it. If you've been looking to go from not a programmer to, yes, I am a programmer and I can accept your job offer, this course is for you. It's taught by Zed Shaw. You know what, Sumo Ling? I'm not even going to go attempt to describe why Zed is the best possible teacher for this. Let's just say he literally wrote the book on Python. This course will take you through 50 plus hands-on exercises that will do this for you. So before, I know how to use Microsoft Word. After, yeah, I can code that up in a few minutes. Even the title, Learn Python the Hard Way, implies this course is not just going to teach you how to make gimmicky programs that are totally useless. This is for people who want to learn to code up useful websites, programs, and applications. Now you can go to the Udemy site anytime and buy this course for 250 bucks. But for today only, we're giving you a crazy break in price over two and a half times off the normal price. This lasts for today and only today. So get it now if you want to start learning Python today. Get your hands on with my Python here. <laughs> nice. So what did we learn about the two different emails today? There's kind of two separate things that are really big takeaways from this. One, the words you use can make a huge difference. My email, I think did a few hundred dollars. Neville email did over $15,000 in revenue. Number two is that in copywriting, I don't know if you've noticed this, there's three types of customers. The way I view it is like red customers are the ones that are never gonna buy no matter what. The green customers at the top are gonna buy everything you do because they love you. And then the yellow ones are this huge, huge amount of people, which is most people. And I think of it like a restaurant. Some people like you are super picky about food. And if you don't like a dish, oh man, you'll be talking to the manager, the restaurant owner, their investors, you'll tweet about it. <laughs> but then there's people like me who never say anything, but I attend a lot of restaurants and I spend a lot of money at restaurants. But see, I'm that most dangerous person because if their food is bad, I never tell them. I never say anything. So they should be actually catering to this large majority of people that spend a lot of money at restaurants, but they're not that active on Yelp or something talking about it. So with AppSumo, there's these customers that love AppSumo and love software and buy everything. 
Then there's the customers that just never come and never buy anything. So whatever, they're just not gonna buy. But just like the restaurants, there's this big amount of these like yellow customers where they are not sure if they should buy it. But if you just tell them some reasons, show them some testimonials and show them how to use the software for their own stuff, they'll be like, okay, I'll buy it. The amount of time I think it took you to write that email was probably like <laughs> five minutes or so to create I mean, that that craptastic email. Totally. But then it probably took me, I mean, I wanna say 45 minutes, but in reality it's probably like two hours to you know format it, think of it, edit it, all that kind of stuff. But the difference was a few hundred bucks versus $15,000. So if you think about the amount of time that versus money, I mean, that's what, I don't know, $7,500 per hour for that email. I mean, would you, put two extra hours in for $7,500 per hour. Yeah, I will. But also write like your mood. So for example, if you wanna write something fun and engaging and smiley, well, if you wake up in the morning, you haven't had your coffee yet, you're probably not gonna write the funniest stuff on the planet. If you wanna write something serious, well then wait for a mood where you're in a really crabby mood and serious and somber, and then you'll write something very serious and somber. So your mood will reflect your thoughts, which reflect how you write. The silly but important example is that our YouTube thumbnails, we've had a few different YouTube thumbnails. One was, I was a baby from Mark Zuckerberg. Secondly was, I was in that like famous photo from the Grammys or Emmys or something like that. And let me guess, it made you laugh, right? Oh, big so you're time. you're trying to have fun with it, you're probably thinking of, maybe I can make a more serious one. And you're just like, ah, oh, let me do the baby one. Well, I think one of, another example of having fun with it is is one of the lawyers that we hung out with recently, my buddy Derek. He made a video that was wasn't super fun, but it was fun for lawyers talking about how Facebook sucks, and that ended up actually making him millions of dollars. That's how I we got to know him because we sued Facebook and won. And so that was because he took kind of a boring topic, made a fun YouTube video, uh, presented a different way, and it got some results. We've talked a lot about copywriting, talked about how it makes you a lot of money, but most importantly, I want you to take action and get some results for yourself today. So go practice your copywriting in the comments section below, and I, with the person who actually gets me to laugh or respond or most enjoyment, I will buy you Neville's Copywriting Course Community and Course so you can learn copywriting and get support to improve your copywriting and make a lot more of that moolah. By the way, if you are looking for more videos about starting a business, there's one up here. There might be one in the middle right around here. I'm definitely gonna be showing it to you, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything else on your business journey. See you out there. I love you. Pew, pew.